Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you the benchmark test for the new Nexus 7. So before we run that, let's see uh, what we have to uh, deal with in terms of specs and parts. So this is uh, the Qualcomm S4 Pro 1.6 GHz processor. It's showing that it's only at 1.51 in actuality. Uh, but it's, uh, it is labeled as 1.6 if I'm not mistaken. Could be 1.5 actually. It's been a while since I've seen the S4 Pro. Um, and it does run the uh, 320 Adreno, which is uh, the same processor on uh, devices such as the S4 um, and the HTC One. So graphics uh, should run fairly well on this. Oops, let me zoom in, realize how far I was out. Um, graphics should run pretty well on this. It's more in terms of the processing power where uh, is going to be the question. Um, in terms of the screen resolution, of course, it is going to be a 1080p screen. Uh, the screen resolution, according to um, this, is going to be 1200 by 824. Um, I believe it's supposed to be in terms of around that for what uh, Google themselves has said. Your uh, internal storage is 26.11, however, with the built-in stuff that's inside of here, which uh, is a few of my apps, uh, it's left at 88%, uh, So, but you can see 26.11 is where you start off with uh, before the updates for the built-in Google apps themselves, of course, as well. Two gigs of RAM, uh, we're left with most of it right now, not being used, and the DPI is at 320. And the battery is also another thing we're going to be checking to see later on on seeing how well it does because it is a smaller battery than the previous Nexus, but with Google's optimization, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. In terms of sensors, we have a lot uh, built into it, so we will see how those are affected as well. All right, and now let's check out the first one, which we're going to do quadrant benchmark testing. So let's zoom out here and run the full benchmark test. And sorry for all the fingerprints. This does get a good amount of fingerprints on it. It's one thing I have noticed uh, a little bit fairly quickly on this device. Here we are. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see the frames per second. As you know, Quadrant is a little bit smaller when it comes to that. It's at 59 relatively most of the time. All right. Let's check out how the score did. And so you can see our device uh, scored well above the 1x. I don't know why Quadrant's been doing this. It hasn't shown the higher uh, versions for a little bit. Um, but it definitely is better than the 1s out of 5645. Uh, just to give you an idea, um, the S4 generally scores around 10,000 that I remember. So. Um, Definitely better compared to, like, say, the Asus Prime, which was uh, one of the biggest ones from last year uh, with the uh, Tegra 3 processor. So definitely better off compared to that, but not quite at the level of uh, some of the higher-end smartphones on the market. So let's check in 2.2 now. And start the test. And let's see how this one does. Now again, we can see the graphics was doing pretty well. It's more so kind of curious on the processor for this device, see how it'll run.
Okay. And now that we're rounding out the CPU, it should start heading towards the GPU. So pretty good on the frames per second, seems to be consistently around 58. And in terms of these, again it seems to be doing uh, fairly well. Oh, well it was. the SD write and read speed and then we'll see how well it compares to the other devices that are out in the market. Okay, so our score was 18502. And now let's see where the other ones lie. So um, this one kind of fell into place uh, closer to the Xperia Z and the Nexus 4, which makes sense. It has the same processor and RAM as uh, both of those other two devices. So it does make sense that it would fall uh, between those two. It is a bit slower compared to the HD One and the S4, which do have, of course, a better version, uh, a newer processor compared to these three devices. So that's about correct and now let's check out the 3d mark test now again uh, if you have seen my some of my other videos i cannot actually run the 3d mark test just because it's getting flagged down 3d mark just doesn't want anyone to show those so uh let's see the results that i uh, previously ran i ran each test twice to kind of see how it would uh, rely on it so this one got a 10 uh 105 which um, it has a very, very low test for a Nexus 7. I'm not sure why um, that if people just were running it wrong or running it before the updates maybe. This has been updated to the latest version of 4.3 um, where I haven't had any bugs, but I have heard people have been having bugs, uh, issues with it. So uh, let's see, where is around the 10, uh, I believe it was 10.4 or something. So um, that doesn't fall too far off from, let's see, 10.105. So 10.105 is again about where the um, Nexus 4 and uh, Sony Xperia, well Z, but not the ZR per se, um, and the LG Optimus G Pro have fallen under. So around that same kind of vicinity of those devices, and then for the extreme test, it landed a 61502. And let's check under the extreme and see how those are doing. So around the 61502. Um, it's about where the S4 Octa-Core uh, landed, but and it is above where the Xperia Z and Nexus 4 landed. So, kind of give you a good idea of how this device has been running. Um, if you have any questions about this device, uh, feel free to ask. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android guy.